Hi, everybody. I am Blake Cabot, and uh, I am here with Pam Kinneberg, and I am the owner of facepaint.com, and Pam is, uh, has done a lot of these, and she's just great, and uh, she lives in the wilds of North Dakota, so <laughs> it's, uh, uh, she's uh, always just, she's a great artist, great graphics designer, uh, and it's always just a real pleasure to have her. She does really crisp, well done designs. And I think you'll agree with me after you've seen this. So um, Pam, with that said, take it away. All right. I'm gonna go head out behind my table here. My lovely model is, is Hannah. And we're gonna start out with some arm designs. Um, I figured that nowadays um, we like to have a few arm designs and um, so that not everything goes on the face. So I have a couple animal arm designs to paint today and one face one. So we'll see if we can get to all of those um, designs. I have a tendency to talk too much or something because I always run out of time, but we're gonna start. Yeah. People oh, ask questions. And, and by the way, feel free to ask questions, just, despite everything she just said. The goal oh, is not sorry. to get the maximum number of designs. That is not the point. <laughs> yes, I love questions. I absolutely love questions. Um, so feel free to ask anything you'd like, for sure. So we're going to start with an animal design, I mean, an elephant design. And I just wanted to show you again that when I start with the design, if I'm going to do an elephant, I always start with pages like this, where I have... Um, gotten images of different elephants in different um, poses. Here is more of a profile, which is what I'm using on the arm. And then here are more front views of elephants so that I have some ideas of what they look like and some, and it just gets my imagination and my creativity flowing. So this is where I start. And when I saw this particular elephant, I just thought an arm design would be really awesome. The other thing I was going to say about um, when you come up with designs when you're creating designs is um, for animals especially you know think about uh, like the main characteristic of an animal like an elephant would be its trunk that sort of defines an elephant and so I um, my design is based on the fact that an elephant has a large trunk and it works perfectly on an arm and so um, that's where um, that's the inspiration I had in creating this design. I'm going to start with this um, one stroke. It is Susie Amaro's um, cakes, her line of cakes that have this sort of arrangement. This one is called Bat Hero Blue. And this is what I'm going to start with. And then I have a three fourths inch um, art factory. Whose cakes are those? Pardon? What? Who's, who, who's the manufacturer of the cakes? Um, well, it's Silly Farm. Um, it's an arty brush cake, but Susie Amaro, it's Susie Amaro's line. She has many of these where they've got this large area of color okay. and then the black on the edge so that they're really good for, you know, one stroke designs because they yeah. sort of outline as you go. So I'm just loading that those colors on my brush trying to get the majority of that light blue on there. We do sell that on facepaint.com. Yeah, they're awesome. These are really nice. Okay, so my brush is loaded and I'm gonna start um, with the head. I'm gonna do the ear sort of last so that I kind of know where I'm at. And I'm gonna start with the head about right here. I'm gonna have you just turn you like that. And the head is sort of flat on top and it comes down. I'm gonna make the main part of this is gonna be the trunk. So I'm really gonna capitalize on that. So I'm gonna come here, go down. I'm gonna make a curve in the trunk. And then I'm gonna go back up again. And then I'm gonna come all the way down to where her fingers are right here. Cause that will be the little um, snout. If you call it a snout, I don't know. Actually, if, if you could move her arm a little higher. Oh, yep, there we go. There, there we, go. we go, perfect. There you see. I'm gonna come right down to this area down here, right where her fingers are so that she can actually go this, like that with this base part of the trunk. 
So mm -hmm. they can sort of play with this design once it's on, they can have fun with it. So there's that part, the top, and then I'm gonna do the bottom the same way. Um, so I know that there's a tusk that's gonna go right here. So I'm leaving a little space for the tusk. I'm curving it up like that. Um, and then I'm gonna complete the rest of the bottom of the trunk like so. It's always good to know your design so that you know where to place your strokes mm -hmm. to make the best use of your time and, um, and colors. And then down here, can you see that? I'm just making this, mm -hmm. this snout part of the trunk where the water comes out and where they blow okay. the water out. I'm just gonna blend that in. And I've got a little sponge here that I can use to so blend it in if there's any areas that need blending. Um, so there's that part of it. And now after I've got that part done, I do the ear. I find it easier to do it that way because then I kind of know where the head is. And the ear they've got, again, you know, when you're, I'm going to move you down here a little bit. Um, elephants have big ears. That's the other part that you people know about elephants. Oops, right. It's true. Head. That is what I know about elephants. Big ears, long trunks. And tusks. They've got tusks. I, I, tusks. I know that for a fact. Right. Have you met an elephant before? And. Uh, uh, I, I have, in fact, met an elephant before. Not not by name, but, you know, we know each other. Okay, um, good. Uh, okay, so here's where the ear is going to go. And you can sort of fill it in with some of this blue. And then you can tap it out with a sponge just to kind of make it all come together there. And then I'm going to finish out this bottom part of the face, like right here. and fill that in with blue and then tap that out. Hi, Beth. So there we have our base. So can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Our whole, I'm gonna move you up just like- At this right point, now. it looks kind of like a stingray. Oh, it sort of does. Now, yeah. the thing about this design, it's a profile. Uh -huh. So if it's on the left arm like this, the child who you're painting it on gets to see that profile. You know, it's, it, they enjoy that because they can see it themselves the right way. Um, other people are going to see it, you know, somewhat just slanting si kind of sideways, but the, the kid you're painting on it will love it because they get to see it the way, you know, that they should see it. Uh -huh. Just a little heads up on that if you follow me on, on that. Okay, once we have that part done, um, the next thing I like to do is take some um, powder. This is Elisa Griffith's powder line and it's the cotton candy. And um, I like to add a little bit of that where the ear is. So the inside of the ear right here, just to give that more definition. And it also adds color, which is really nice. Some of these animals, you know, they're gray or they're brown or whatever. And it's just really nice to kind of do an animal in a different color other than what they actually are. <laughs> um, just to give it more excitement and you know this is not a realistic elephant and I give a little blush on his face and then I also like to put a little bit of that pink down the bottom of his trunk just to add that just a fun color down there it's always nice to make these colorful designs yep. um, rather than just having it all gray you know that's something that not a lot of people do um, but it's, uh, it's a good idea. I have a tendency to want to be realistic. That's what I always gravitate towards. So I always have to tell myself, you know, Pam, what can you do on here to change up the color and make it fun and colorful? And I always have to push myself there because I always have a tendency to like, want to be so accurate and mm -hmm. it's painting, it's art. We can do whatever we want to. We can make this elephant, whatever color we want to. Now I'm, I'm using some craze white and I'm just gonna paint in this tusk area right here. 
Okay. So now that I've left that space, the tusk becomes really nice and white. If I would have had to go over the blue and the black, um, it wouldn't have been as nice and white as it is now. So if you know where your design is going, that's a great, a great thing to be able to do. Now we've got that base and I'm gonna go in and uh, paint my black details on there. Mm -hmm. You can put glitter on that if you want to. Um, I'm actually gonna put some sparkle at the very end on in particular places. So I'm not using glitter here. Um, I'm, I'm gonna start out with the eye and the eye is sort of like an upside down um, apostrophe. I kind of paint like a half circle right here and then just go up like that for the eye and then paint a few little wrinkles. Elephants are full of wrinkles. So a few little wrinkles around the eye. Then um, I'll work on the ear, kind of give it a little bit more shape so that they know it's an ear. And now, you know, when you've got the black outline from that one stroke, you wouldn't have to go in and outline this because it, you know, already sort of is outlined. It really saves a step, but you can, if you want, if there's certain places that are a little um, wonky, <laughs> you can go in and add a little black to the edge of that. So I'm going to spring that up and then I'm going to um, make this, the tusks come in. Um, there's a little portion of their face that starts mm -hmm. that tusk. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to outline the tusks to define that. Put a little thing right here. That's a good looking arm elephant. It's coming together. So we've got the face. And, um, and then the tusk, I mean, the um, trunk always has wrinkles. So just going to take my black and put in places periodically. Um, you don't have to do it like exactly all the way down, but I put a few there, go down and put a few here, just in kind of vary the lines a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that it looks like. Kirsten thinks that's a very cute design. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. It's, it should be, you know, and it should be really fast and easy to paint too. So um, it's not hard. It's really quite simple, but effective. It looks really great. Thank you. And then I'm gonna do some on the bottom too. We get, we're also getting a wowzer on that one. Oh, yay. <laughs> from Thanks. Kip. From, from who, Kip? Kip. Hi, Kip. Kip. Newt. Anne normally hates elephants, but loves this one. Oh, good. Well, yeah, elephants are hard. I know when, um, I watched Prima's class and she was doing animals. And then she said, <laughs> I loved her. I loved when she said she hadn't cracked the code for elephants yet. Yeah, she <laughs> it made me laugh. I was, it was such a good way to put it because like, yeah, I haven't either. But this arm one, I really liked um, how it turned out. So <laughs> maybe I cracked the code on the arm one. I don't know. But um, anyway, so there we have the, the trunk and then, um, I want to add a few water droplets coming out. I'm going to move your arm like right here. I'm going to have some water, like this spouting off water here. And so I'm going to take a filbert brush. This is the little drop paint ball, paint pal brush from Silly Farm. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to load one side with blue. Mm -hmm. so just like that. So now I, you've got one side with blue on it. And then I'm going to take my white and load the other side with white. So you sort of mm -hmm. have a dual kind of brush. Right. And then you can do, um, then you can do water droplets like in one fell swoop there with a white highlight on the top.
and you kind of turn your brush so you end up in a point like that. Um, you could reload and do that a little better. The angle I'm painting at is a little hard to get that quite right, but there we go. That's a little bit better. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely so see the water. Simple, like, with your hands. Mm -hmm. So that way the kid can just go like, like that, that Hannah is doing. It's kind mm -hmm. of fun and it looks like the, the little mouth area here is talking. They can talk with it if they want. I can see them having fun with that. Um, the next thing I am going to do is I got this elephant done when I was doing the design and you know, you've got this nice elephant there, but I just, I'm like, I thought it was lacking some sort of base or structure around it. It looks sort of empty. So mm -hmm. then I decided to add some tribal markings to it. Oh. Um, and you have an I elephant a tattoo. Off. Well, sort of. I'm not adding it to the elephant. I'm adding it like on the ends, sort of. I see. I'll, I see. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, now I'm using um, Craze Black okay. with a number three round brush. It's a blazon brush by Marcella Bustamante. And I'm going to move your arm all the way down here. Marcella does good brush. Yeah, she does. Okay, so then I'm going to start like right here and um, put a just a nice little um, line there and curve it around there. And then I'm gonna put another one right there and here. With tribal lines, you just kind of curve them around each other. Once you got your first one done, you just find places to kind of follow the same line that you created to begin with. So there's that portion. And then over here, I'm going to do a line that goes up here and follows this curve around. Mm -hmm. And then take one coming from off here and go down like so. And then one more coming off of this line mm -hmm. and up. You know, one thing Anne said, I think she's absolutely right, is that uh, the shading that you do with the black um, really gave it a lot of depth. So Yes. Was... Yes, it makes it three-dimensional because right. it, you know, it blends in there. Um, that's absolutely right. That's what I like about this. So I'm just going to kind of round off these ends right here in the center is just to give it a little bit so that's um like one it kind of finishes off this end and makes the design sort of flow up the arm and then the other one i'm going to do right in this area right here and i'm going to come off here with a swirl that goes down into this little dip And I think this really gives this elephant some um, pizzazz and um, mystique. I don't know, you see um, circus elephants and stuff have some things like this uh -huh. on them. There. I'm going to come off of here with a line that heads up here. Just play up. Tribals are super fun. You just play off of that central, central swirl. And then down like so. All right. And one more line right here. So now we've got some just something in the background that really, I think, completes this design. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go in with some highlights and then finish off with that part I was telling you about the, the bling that I'm mm -hmm. gonna be adding. So I'm gonna grab some white craze paint. And white craze paint is really nice. It's very opaque and um, covers really good. So 
And um, right now, I think we've got a good special on it. So, yeah, we got a big coupon on that. Um, are we? Well, we will for this session alone. I'll, I'll give you guys, I don't know, what, 25% nice. off of Craze. I'll go create. Wow, somewhere. that's a really good deal. I'll go do put that. Put those links off. up. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put a dot in his eye right there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go make these folds more dimensional. And then um, put a little highlight there. And then I'm going to highlight where these little wrinkles are going just to give them more dimension. It does, you're, I, I'm working sort of with a pretty dry brush because I don't want them to be super opaque. Um, I want them to be a little more subtle. Do this and this. And it just makes them like they're actually sticking out a little bit. Okay. A little bit right here, here, here. All right. And you could just put highlights wherever you felt they needed them. But there's my highlights. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we in the picture here? Okay, so. like that. And then um, finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use liquid bling. This is um, fuchsia. And okay. I'm gonna put it inside the black areas of the tribal lines. And it really pops on those. So I'm start, I'll start right here. Can you see that? I don't know. Can you turn your arm yeah. a little bit? Yeah. Isn't that pretty? It is pretty. So beautiful. That really gives some really pretty sparkle to the um, kind of end of this design. So there's that. Let's hold it right up to the, oops, turn it around a little bit. Let's go this way with it. Are you able to even see that? I can't even see if you can see that. Yeah, we can, magenta. we can. Okay, all right. And then I'll do a little bit right on here. Thanks, Hannah, you're doing something. There, and now we have an elephant and I'll just have you hold it like that. It'll take about, it takes about 10 minutes for this um, liquid bling to dry. So just always make sure you tell your customers when you put it on not to touch that for about 10 minutes, otherwise it'll smear all over. Um, but now she can um, kind of go like this again with your hands. You, they can you know, play with that area right in here and they're gonna sparkle and when I said before, they get to see this. It's positioned so that they see it as um, a horizontal profile of an elephant. And they'll love that because they're, it's, their, it's their arm design and they'll love being able to see it um, from their viewpoint. Um, so that's my elephant. Okay. Thank you, Hannah. That um, is a great, as somebody said, it. wow. Okay. Oh, thank you. And now I've got um, Robin coming in and we're going to do a giraffe on an arm. Mm. And um, so I'll, before she comes in, I'll just show you um, my giraffe. Here's what I downloaded, um, just different illustrations and photos of giraffes just kind of get to see what their head looks like what their eyes look like try to get some ideas from here and when I said before capitalize on a characteristic of the animal you know when you're trying to come up with a, a, a your own design capitalize on what is it about this animal that that everybody knows and with a giraffe it's the neck they have this long long neck mm -hmm. and so I thought an arm design would be great um, to kind of wrap the, the neck around the arm because they have such a long arm they, or neck they can wrap it around the arm. 
So go ahead. I have Robin here. She's going to be my arm model for this one. Mm -hmm. And stretch that out here. Looks good. Perfect. All right. And so that's my inspiration. And um, now let's start painting it. So I'm going to start it out using this is um, Sunshine. It's Leanne's collection. It's the Sunshine One Stroke. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to use a half inch flat blazing brush by Marcella Bustamante. And I'm just going to pick up the orange and the yellow. And this is what I'm going to create the um, the body and head of the giraffe. So I'm just gonna load those. And you see, I, put, I think I use those the most cause see how dipped that is. <laughs> I need to, I, I, have, I have a trouble sometimes wearing down my split cakes unevenly. I don't know, I'm really bad at that. So I get this big dip in there. So load that up and I'm going to start with the head and um, keeping the darker, I'm going to. Um, just to give everybody the link uh, that we were talking about. So I calling this Pam 25. So this is 25% off craze. It's good uh, for tomorrow. And here you guys go. Okay, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to start with the head of the giraffe about like right in this section below the elbow. And then, the, and then the neck will wrap around this section. And um, I'm, I have a tendency to always do everything a little too small. So I always have to tell myself when I'm painting, Pam, go bigger, go bigger. Um, because usually a lot of times bigger makes for a more um, pronounced design. So I start with like an upside down U for the top of the head. And then where the eyes are gonna go, they bulge out a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of little bulges like that. And then um, the rest of the face is sort of long and square. So go down and sort of um, kind of square it off like that. It comes down to a point and then they have a lower jaw or lower chin right here that's sort of square but this top one is rounded here. Let me get that a little bit better. Okay, anybody have any questions? No, no, it's, it's, it's no kind of a questions. quiet group. It's a fair number of people watching, but they just don't want to talk. So I just kind of fill in the middle with the paint like this and then um, just take a sponge and just blend it mm -hmm. because when you're using a half inch brush you know it's not going to necessarily you know be super wide to fill in those areas i think i feel like i have a lot more control when i'm doing shapes like ears and all that kind of stuff when i'm using a half inch brush um and then i'm going to go and do a couple of ears Like that, and then on this side, and they got kind of some big fun ears. And then they also have those little kind of horn-like things. I know there's a name for them, but I don't know what it is. Someone can look that up and Google it and let us know. <laughs> I don't think they're horns, but you know, they have these little stump things at the top of their heads. Hannah, do you know what those- I, I think mean, those are called Robin, horns. Do you, know you don't know. Olga still okay. wants a guinea pig one day. We're gonna Olga for you. I'll have the whole session dedicated to just guinea pigs. Because <laughs> she asked for a guinea pig. Oh Pretty great, really. That's funny. I think I have a guinea pig design. You do? Yeah, I do. Oh, uh, one question was uh, from Olga was how quick do those glitters dry? Um, the one I did on the elephant. Elephant. Yeah. Yeah. It takes about 10 minutes and it depends on how thick you put it on. If you put it on too thick, it's going to, it's going to take a lot longer to dry. So you really want to try to put it on um, as thin as you can. Um, so now I'm going to add the neck on here and I'm going to start about right here and just start going down with the first part of this neck. 
And you don't have to go all the way around the arm. I never go all the way around the arm because then you get kids in awkward positions that have to like lift their arms up for you to go around. And it really doesn't really work that well. So I just pretend that it wraps around. Um, and then, so I've got the neck started here and then I'm gonna come from right here and then pretend that his neck has wrapped around right here. And you know, it's really gonna vary because every child, every person that you paint this on is gonna have a different size arm. Um, so just be kind of prepared for that, that you might have to adjust a few things mm -hmm. depending on the size and the length of their arm. And you can just blend that out. So that's um, basically the base where I'm gonna have my giraffe. And I do like to really know where my leaves are gonna go. I, I, I paint leaves on here too. So be, before I get the rest done, I'm going to just in white, just paint where my leaves are gonna go. He's gonna be eating one here and you'll see why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And there's gonna be some leaves hanging out of his neck or mouth. And then um, we're gonna have a leaf right here and here. And then I'm gonna have one also right down here. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is now I'll show you, I'm gonna take a stencil and add a background with this stencil. This is a giraffe print. I have the big one. These are the BAM stencils and I have the mini one. And I'm gonna be using them both um, both as the background and as his spots, um, just to kind of correlate everything that this is a zebra design. When I first did this one, I just did, not a zebra, a giraffe. <laughs> um, when I first did the design, I just did this, but I really felt that it needed to be some sort of background um, just to give it a sense of place and not that it was just hanging out on the arm. So that's what I'm using this one for. And I'm gonna use this um, cake. It's the um, Mermaid Pixie Rainbow Cake. And you see, I use this one a lot. It's wearing, it's wearing out. Do, I have a question, um, you know, with this black hole in the middle, do kids, I wonder from the people that are um, watching, do kids always ask you what that black dot in the middle of your rainbow cakes are? I don't know. Am I the only one? This will be in my kit and they'll say, what's that black dot or paint? And why do you have a, a black paint in the middle of that rainbow cake? They don't know that that's the color of the bottom of the pan, <laughs> but they always see it like there. it's a piece of black paint in there. I'm just curious if anybody else has ever experienced a kid saying that before. It's so funny. I laugh every time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it turns out Julie looked up the antlers. They're called... O S S I C O N E S. So I'll call it Ossicones. Oh, oh, I knew there was a name. And that does There's a name. Good. It's called Ossicones. Sweet. Okay. So here are his Ossicones. I just have a sponge here. I'm going to load this color up. I just, I spray my sponges and then load on the cake. So I got that. I don't want it to be super heavy with paint because I don't want it to be super, super dark when I'm using this. So the reason I have these leaves here is I, I wanna know where to place this. And I don't necessarily wanna do my stencil before I do the leaves. Otherwise I end up going with green paint over blue and purple. And then you get this really ugly, you know, brown color because you're covering other paint. So I kinda wanna see where my stencil needs to go. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to place the purple in the areas that are close to the giraffe. So it gives dimension, like it's, go, it's receding, like it's, like it's a shadow almost back behind them. And if I, I'll go over the, the leaf a little bit, at least I will try to avoid it for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, so I start out with the dark colors um, up like that and then um, fade off to the light colors. You see, I went right over that leaf there. I didn't follow my- <laughs> oh, One suggestion <laughs> on your split cake uh, came in from Julie. She said that um, 
you should just tell them it's it's magic in the paint. Oh, hey, that's a great idea. It magically, yeah, that's a great idea. I'll have to I'll have to tell them that. And then I'm gonna do some down right here. So I have that, and then I'm gonna go down here and do some right on her hand area right here. And now that I know where that leaf is, I will avoid that area as best I can. So it's sort of just you fade it off, sort of. So it starts dark and then just fades off. And I'm also gonna do it right up here too. Oops, wrong color. And this won't be perfect, but we're gonna go over it with line work. So it'll all work out, but it just gives it, um, I don't know, just a place to, it just seems to need it in the background. So there you have um, your background. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I'm going to go in and if it gets on, it doesn't really matter. It's okay. And then I'm going to use these same stencils for the giraffe body. And I'm going to use, um, the color, um, uh, what's it called? Superstar berry wine. This is the color. It looks like I've repotted it, but this is the color that's going on there. Again, I'm just trying to add color to. Uh, to berry shimmer or just berry? It's normal. not the shimmer. They do have a shimmer. You could use a shimmer if you want. I'm not using the shimmer. This is just okay. the, the regular color. And then, um, and let's put on some spots. And this is where I use both the mini one and the big one. So we're gonna use the mini one on the face. And um, I try to start dark and then sort of just fade it off. So there's not a hard edge right here. And I just kind of rub it over. And I just sort of want to lightly fade it off. So it kind of fades off into the middle part here. Mm -hmm. And just a few on the sides of where his face is right here. So it looks like that. So you just got the hint of some on his face. And then I take the big one and um, just do the neck with that. Start out right below his head. That would be where the shadow would be. So I make sure that those areas are dark right there. And then I just try to uh, rub gently so that it's darker here and lighter there. Okay, so it's very intricate got. background. And once you're outlining and everything gets on it, you know, it looks better. But right now, this is just your base. So there's our spots. The next thing I'm going to do is the leaves. And I'm using um, tag leaf yellow for this. And um, just getting my brush, a flat brush loaded. Actually, I'm, I want to use I use them, I'm using the wrong brush. I wanna use this one again, the half inch. And I'm just getting a touch of this dark on there. Not, most of it is the yellow and the light green. So I got this and then we're gonna just, and this is, you know, more of a unreal, it's not a realistic looking giraffe. So I'm not painting leaves that look like realistic leaves just painting more cartoony type leaves. And they're fast and easy. To, and, and you can do either one. I like to keep the dark on the outside. And the leaves coming out of his mouth. Mm -hmm. We'll get those painted on like he's eating like so. And then the one at the bottom here. Uh, 
Emily says this is, is everybody's loving this. They, she says oh, she just can't wait for the line work because uh, the base looks so great. Oh, thanks. Awesome. Um, I also, when I have this loaded, I put like a center line up my the leaves like that. And I also um, like to kind of add a few just wisps like that. Kind of like grass or the branches or whatever, just to give it a few more fun little strokes while you got your brush loaded. All right, so that is our base. And then we're gonna be coming in and doing the black line work. And I'm using an, um, the same number three round brush mm -hmm. with the craze black. Beth loves this. Thank Beth. you, Beth. Okay. Um, I start at the top and then just work my way down so that I'm not smearing black paint. And um, top of his head is sort of like that little arch. And then I paint these little ossicones. Is that what they are? Ossicones? Ossicones. Okay. And you can just have a lot of fun with those. They can kind of be anything you want them to be. But I just kind of make them look like little pom-poms at the top like that. Mm -hmm. And then ears. I love giraffe ears. They're really fun to paint. That says the colors are especially beautiful with a background texture. Oh, thanks. Cynthia had a giraffe request yesterday. That's great. Oh, really? You had a gig and she froze completely. So, oh well here's one yeah um the other feature of giraffes is that they have these big like doughy eyes and so those are really fun to put on i start with making like a a little stroke like this like the top of their eyes and then where this bulge is that's kind of their big eyes mm -hmm. they have really big eyes and they sort of poof out from their heads and just fill that in. And you can give them eyelashes too, depending on, you know, if you're painting a boy or a girl or it doesn't really matter, I don't suppose, but you can give them little eyelashes. Uh -huh. Make it look like a girl giraffe. There you go. Yeah. Nothing wrong with a girl giraffe. No. Okay, so those are their eyes. And then um, and then just come down with their face, the rest of their face. It's kind of squared off right there. And um, they have this little pointy nose that comes down here. And the, their bottom lip sort of fans out, something like that. And then I also make little drag and drop little things with my black brush just to kind of give it some fun, a fun feel. And this typically goes pretty fast. Forgot to paint the nostrils here. And then um, just paint in where the, and if you can try to vary the width of your lines so that it's not all just one solid line. How long does this take at an event? Somebody asked. A oh, I don't asked. Know. Yeah, it's a good question. I have never done it at an event. Um, but it would take at least five minutes, I'm thinking. I don't know if I could do it in three. I would probably have to leave some stuff out if I did it in three. All right, um, there is that. Oh, I forgot this leaf right here. And then, um, and then let's do some, we're gonna do some white highlights and a glitter and we'll be done. 
And you know, you can quit at any point. You could quit right here if you wanted to. Um, you can always do stuff like that to speed up designs, just take them so far. Because the, the child that you're painting it on wouldn't know, you know, the difference. It's always us artists who like, oh, I want to add a little bit more and I want to add a little bit more. Right. <sighs> Put some dots in the eyes so that they come to life. Some highlights on the ears. And then I put these little twinkly stars too to give it some um, sparkle. So yeah, and you oh, can what just- size, um, What size brush are you lining with? Um, it's a number three round by Marcella Bustamante. Okay, I'll get you the link to that. Yeah, it's a nice brush. And just add some highlights here. Sometimes I like to put dots where I'm adding these highlights just to kind of break up a line. <laughs> doesn't go all the way across. Oh, I see I forgot to I forgot to um, put my black line work on the neck up there. Let me quick do that. There. Okay. Um, put a few more stars in here and then I'll add the glitter. I'll put some right in here. and right down here. And that just really makes it sparkle. I like being able to come all the way down onto the hand. Mm -hmm. Really fun to be able to do. Okay, so there we've got that base and I'm gonna use this. I, I have my glitters in these stacking things. So these may be all from different places. They're not all, they don't come this way, but that way you don't have to take a whole bunch of cases or um, containers of um, glitter with me, but I'm using this blue one here which is PC's glitter cream. And um, I'm using this little applicator here. And I'm just gonna add some sparkle throughout the design. Just to give it, everybody likes glitter, so you know, you gotta add it when you can. Yep, that makes sense. All right, that's the giraffe right there. So, yep, so sparkles and it wraps around and they can have fun just with telling everybody that they've got this giraffe neck wrapped around their arm. So there you go, any questions? Uh, no, perfection, looks brilliant, adorable. Uh, Nobody said that, but I, th I think they, they meant it. No, no, they all said that. They all thanks, said that. Blake. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, um, Robin. I want to say Hannah. Thanks, Robin, for being a great arm model. I appreciate it. And Robin, um, thank you. I, we, we just see your arm, but whatever your arm is, it's, 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 it's fantastic. You got to say hi to Robin. Robin, say hi. Can you see her? Say hi. Yeah, there. Hi, Robin. You're sort of blurry, <laughs> but we got the idea. <laughs> Okay, so um, now that I've messed this up, um, the next one I'm going to do is, um, okay, are we back? Perfect. Um, back. I'm going to do a full face monkey, and I'm going to do it on a board, and we have eight minutes left, do we? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I will try to, this is a quick one. Uh, monkeys are, um, have always been super hard for me. I've never done a monkey because I always feel like, I just always feel like they look like scary or something. And maybe this one does too, but not as scary as what some of the other monkeys I've seen. That said, that was the best arm ever. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, um, I wanted to be able to do a monkey and feel comfortable doing it. So I developed this design. It's, um, um, 
pretty fat. It should be pretty fast and easy to do. You can whip it off. I mean, there's a lot of times where um, kids just really want to be monkeys. And I'm always feel like I don't want to do a monkey because I have no idea how to do it. So I just really challenged myself to learn how to do monkey. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start with this. It's called Tigress. It's Nat's um, gold edition. And so it has gold paint in there along with some orange or um, and brown and black. So I, it's a one stroke process. So it's really quick and really fast. I'm using a three fourths inch flat brush and loading that up. And we're gonna create most of the face from this. Um, I'm gonna start with going around the eyes and I'm gonna keep the dark part in the center. So we just make a circle around the eye Pretty easy. Use that and then do the other side. And make a circle here. And I've done this on a real person too and it works out really, really great. Whoops, oh, I had the wrong direction there. That's really interesting eye. Yeah. It looks kind of, well. It looks kind of freaky right now. It looks very freaky right now. Yeah, because it's covering his eyes, you know. Unfortunately, right. on these boards, they can't close their eyes. Um, so just go above and below the eyes like that. And I'll try to take some of this off so it doesn't look so weird. It's still gonna look that way because I kind of do this quick and that way you can see his eyes. And once you have that done, then um, it's time to do his the muzzle area and the chin. And it's the same paint. And and by using this, you create. Um, on this next part, you're going to create that dimension with the dark bean on the outside. So um, start right by here and then just go up to the center like that. And then also do the base like right along the lip area. So you come around, go like this and over there. And you can, um, again, take a sponge and just blend this part together. And then the other part is that you do kind of the bottom lip. You can just go right around that bottom lip. It works really great with a flat brush to do that. It goes right around their lip. It's super cool. I'm kind of ruining it. I shouldn't have gone over it. <laughs> I always do that. Okay, just bring this out a little bit better. Okay, we'll keep it at that. If you screw up, you can you always can never clean. screw up. You're you an can artist. clean part of it off with a little wipe. Face paints, it's always yeah. art. Right. And then once you start, then you wish you hadn't even started doing it because then you make other mistakes. Hi, Irene. Anyway, you get the gist of that there. Okay, so then, um, oh, this isn't, got to even that out a little bit. There we go. And if you need to fill in the middle, you can always use gold paint on here and just fill in the middle a little bit. So there you sort of have your base of the monkey. And um, the next thing I'm going to use is I'm taking this Hero palette by Annalie, mm -hmm. uh, Hero Power by Annalie Rivera. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna use 
this color right here on the end. This is called Crash, I believe. This one, it's got black and blue and silver and white. And that's the, um, the one that I'm gonna use for the hair around. Oh, one other thing with this color, we got three minutes, I gotta quickly do this, is you put the ears on too with it. They got big, monkeys have big ears. And so on the side of their head, make sure you give them some ears with that. Mm -hmm. All right, same brush. And with this crash color, just load it up. Make sure you get all four of those colors on there because the black will give you dimension. And then you start in the center here and then just move the brush back and forth like so mm -hmm. to create hair. And just sort of, as it goes around the face, just sort of lean it that direction. I'm gonna try to do this with my left hand here on this side. So you're creating, you're, you're being able to, with these one strokes, get a lot accomplished in a short amount of time. I mean, you could, oh, if I smeared my ear there, sorry. And then kind of bring it right up there and down a little bit around that muzzle area. I was to a class, um, Prima Barton gave a class at St. Louis and she did a monkey and she used this sort of stroke, like moving the brush back and forth like this to create that hair. And it's, um, that's my, was such a cool way to do it. Cause it just, it's a quick way to accomplish a full face like that really fast. And it, when you have the black in there, it gives that dimension like right in the center there that that's recessed. Mm -hmm. Someone asked, um, can you link that hero? What hero? I don't know what that means. I don't either. Okay. If you could tell me, Renee, I'll be happy. Oh, to maybe link the hero palette, Annalise hero palette. Oh, okay. Right. So moving on uh, quickly, I'm going to um, put some line work in there quick. I'm use, I'll just use black. My ear over here got destroyed, so you're gonna have to just like deal with that. <laughs> Cause I rubbed my hand across it. Things don't dry as fast on these boards as regular paint. So unless you're really careful, sometimes you'll smear them. Uh, monkeys have this sort of thick brow right up here. So um, it kind of comes around and goes up like that. Someone said they wouldn't have thought of blue for the hair. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think of ways to add color, you know, because uh, animals tend to be, that's, you know, just kind of basic neutral colors. And I just, I just, you know, I'm trying to force myself to like, what color can I, can I add in there? And down the center of their nose, they have these wrinkles. So you can put those in. And, and then um, underneath they have these kind of bags on their eyes, mm -hmm. sort of some wrinkles there. And you know, you, you can even just skip this part if you're trying to do it super fast when you have your basic structure there, but a few little lines kind of make it come together around this muzzle. Put some nostrils in there. I'm doing this super quick, so this might not be. Right. Not be perfect in any stretch of the imagination, but. Yeah. And uh, one thing that too is characteristics of this part of a monkey is that they have these little um, wrinkles that come up from the bottom of their mouth. Mm -hmm. like that 
So I put some of those in there just to give it that look. You can do around the ears. Fix this ear with some line work. <laughs> there we go. And then um, to add a little bit more color, that again, I'm always trying to think of what, how can I add color to this? Is I'm going to take some yellow paint. This is crazy yellow. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to add hi my highlights with yellow. And I'm going to put some like right up in the center where that little hair is, like there's a highlight in the center. You know, just to have fun with animals. They don't have to be like perfectly the color that they are in nature. And that this is what I do my highlights with. Makes sense. Is the yellow rather than white. Everybody loved all these great monkey. Everybody just, just finds this fantastic. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you, everyone. I had fun um, coming up with these and challenging myself because I don't always, like I said, monkeys have been my nemesis, elephants. And um, just a few, I always, I always like to add some dots too to kind of give it more of a creative, mm -hmm. not just lines. So I'm just gonna add some dots that go up into the hairline like that and just add some interest and fun mm -hmm. shapes to it like that. Yeah, these aren't like, it's not perfect, but wow. Okay, I did that sort of fast, <laughs> but there you, you go. You did really well. There's uh, a monkey. For those that are watching, um, we've got Sally Ann Lynch next week on Monday, different uh, rose styles. Uh, we have Vanessa Mendoza, his and her sugar skull. She's a really a, a terrific sugar skull person. So I'm pretty excited. Yes, about she's her coming on. Pam recommended her. So that's why I, I talked to her. So uh, <laughs> that's really how it happened. I just want you to know that, that, that none of these are my ideas. It's all Pam. So oh, um, <laughs> no, anyway, no, well, so, that's not quite true, but yeah. You did it as always. Excellent, excellent designs, Pam. I mean, we could wake and watch this for another couple of hours and we will have Pam back uh, not too far in the distant future. We will have her on October 12th um, doing Halloween boy designs and then fall designs. And then we just added her for more arm designs. So um, it's sort of exciting. I'm really excited about it. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, thank you, Pam. Thank you, Hannah and Robin. The other, Robin. And Robin. And Robin, I just, yeah. And um, thank you all for joining us. And uh, and I will post pictures of these. I okay, will we'll be posting pictures of all three of these designs too on, on face paint, on the web, on the Facebook page, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So Pam's yeah. going to email me those and I'm going to post them up. And, um, and I really appreciate it. And uh, remember to buy stuff from facepaint.com. Uh, great sale, great sale, 25% off. Yep. Great sales, 25% off for craze. So um, that's just great. So uh, please guys um, uh, have a safe life. <laughs> it's, this is the craziest time we've all, any of us have lived with. Um, and it is just, it is just weird. Okay. But thank you guys. Hope all's well. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Pam. You bet.